Good everyone, my name is Joseph Chayola, a graduate of Obafemi Awolo University. So I'll be taking us about tips that a student should need or should know to be able to excel in his or academics and I've uh, titled this Unveiling the Lie. Just read and your grades will be good. So you know, a lot of times we've heard things like, okay, read your books. I mean, I remember then in school, my parents would call me and say, ensure you read your books as if all that there is to passing your exam or doing well your academics is just reading your books. So this um, webinar is just to ensure that um, I try to fill in the gap or let you know the information. So there are a lot of topics that were coming to mind concerning the webinar, but I just prefer this second best topic would have been um, what the top students in your classroom tell you. So these are basic tips or these are just minor minor tips that you would learn. For me, I, I basically categorize most of them, maybe not all, and they worked for me. So these are just some minor, minor things I feel like if you can add to what you are doing, maybe the extra, so you can always see a change in your results. And also, thank you for following me through this journey. Okay, so I'll first of all start with the disclaimer that um, not everything I say is actually true. So some is actually subjective. I mean, you can't owe them or for face value they work for me doesn't mean they work for you so you want to ensure that you see about the information the one that you think you want to apply now or the one you want to brood over and uh, you know there's really no one way to be in an high achieving student there's no one straight formula if there is i would have just given you and tell you don't need to read or just stay in this webinar just go and learn the one way route so there's no one way route for you to actually become very better or achieve your desired grade so and um there are the things that just read that your grade to be good so that's that's not true so that's not always true so you know the, the reason why you are not passing is not because you are not reading so there are persons who read all their life i, I know a lot of persons who the way that which they read was I mean, it was probably time so the rate as which I read, but it was not just the, the effort was not just commensurate. And I've had a lot of sin, scenarios of students which I have also witnessed myself, whereby you know the you read well and you were underscored by your lecturer. You probably don't know for any reason, so you you were just you just discouraged. I mean, after all I've read, after all I've done, it looks like an outbreak, and you're like, come on. After all, I've invested into my time of reading and this lecture just underscored me. And that scenario would be that you read and you overscored. Although that really happens, I don't know, for a school like where you... So there are instances like that to where you read and the lecture just give you guys free mark and all. And there are some times whereby your results was commensurate with what you read. So you are like, I, the reason why I had C in this course is because I actually read for like a C. And some would be like the reason why I had A was because I knew I gave him my best. But most times, the an average student will always want him to either be overscored or his results to be proportional. So that means this is just letting us know that reading alone is not actually the solution, or it's not actually the one way um, to achieving excellence as a student. And uh, we both know that reading alone would do it. So that's like I, I feel for my introduction for this. Uh, so what are the common might students have? So this might, uh, what are the common um, misconceptions that students have? Like, okay, uh, this is why, and I, this misconception has basically affected their academics. So you see, um, one of the major misconceptions is that school is calm. Now, anything that you do not treat as important, you are just going to treat with the levity. So because of people are always like, school is calm, there's really no point, either you read it or not, or eventually I have this skill set I do, or sorry, I have this handy work I am doing, what I'm just doing is just for me to graduate and move on to my personal business. So my question is now, so what's the point of staying four years in school? Well, maybe because you just want to have a BSc, but not seeing that way, so school is not scam, either no matter the course you are studying, so you see it as relevant, you might not know how it is relevant now. But um, understanding that you can never go back to become an undergraduate again, I think it should be one motivation for you to just face your academic squarely. I mean, give it all your best because you can't go back to say you want to write junior work now. No matter how intelligent you are now, you pass that level or that stage. And then that my student is to have is that two one is two one. So yes, somebody like. Um, somebody is on a 3.5 and somebody is on a 4.49. 4 
So by class upgrade, they are both two and actually they are both second class upper. But really, in the outside world, I mean, I, I, that's, that's a very wrong use of word. Not outside world, I mean, after you graduate, I know. In some scenarios, two one is not two one. In some scenarios, grade don't even count. In some scenarios, grade count. So I will not probably tell you all of the advantages of grade, but one thing I will say for what grade does for you is that it gives you perspective. It gives a lot of people to see you from a different perspective. But if you are on a, say, let's say you're on a 4.0 now, you and you are like really no matter what you do till you graduate you will still be a two one student so that mindset would always limit you from aiming higher so if you actually had a not so good result the next thing that will come to your mind is that oh i'm still on a strong two one so nothing can shake me from this and sometimes students will be like okay i just want to ease the four points when i'm getting to the four point something i'm okay so sometimes people who are probably on the four point two three they can if they just see it as oh, more, I want to do this thing with all my best, like seeing it as 4.2 is different from 4.3, 3.5 is from 3.6. I mean, that's like my major aim. I think what you need to have right now. Don't see it as a range of grades. See it as 3.54 is different from 3.55. I think that's like the mindset. And um, some people, the, one of the common my students have is that um, if you want to get good grades, just do academics only. I don't know, but I think that's boring. If all you just do for four or five years is just read your books, go to tutorials, go to library and all that would be very boring because you wouldn't even want to do academics alone. And really it is rare for you to see students who do academics alone. Other people are busy doing maybe most time wasting their time in frivolities, maybe watching movies all day, probably watching doing some other things that might not be adding value. But there's just an average student is always just doing something. So don't say because you want to get good grades that would now prompt you to want, uh, say you want to drop other schedules that might not be the best thing to want to do now another my students have is that I am not intelligent and I'm going to give us a scenario of a case one year so I'm going to change this um, particular screen that you're watching now to give you a scenario but before I go there so let me just give you the solution for all of this above so treat your academics like all your life depends on it and that is the only thing you need to succeed I mean, if you see that, okay, this academics, me, I'm, I really want to go into academics, you might not. I mean, I, I feel like you can just tell yourself that lie for that moment of four, five years that my life depends on this thing. If I do not, if I do, not do well in school, I would not succeed. Obviously, that is not true. You don't doing well or doing well in school is not the only criteria or criterion basically for succeeding. But I think if you see it that way, it will help you. And that was one of the things that... I actually did. I saw it that way. I mean, so that's how I was doing other things. So let me go to my case one. We're talking about the my students have that um, I am not intelligent. So students say, oh, I'm not intelligent. So this is a perfect scenario of, oh, I'm not intelligent. So uh, so somebody says that, oh, probably most majorly, you might, I don't know, maybe this is a perfect classification, but you see students who says, oh, I'm a below average student, or I'm an average student, and Oh, I'm above average. Those av above average guys are most likely those who were <laughs> senior prefects when they were in, uni in secondary school. So let's see. So below average, I would say maybe they have other distractions. Um, most times they feel like from primary school they've just been taking 11th position, 14th position, maybe junior secondary school. They're not really used to do, doing well. And when they read, it takes a while for them to understand. And they are just they're not okay with the C D E. They they don't want to stress themselves. An average student is probably okay with B and C and just feels like okay, let me just come in and get a second class upper. At least I am with I'll feel proud about that. And most times they don't want to overly stress themselves. And the above average students, when I'm talking about this classification of um below average, average, above average, I'm talking in respect to maybe IQ. So I, I, above average student, so you see that they are naturally intelligent, they grasp faster. Sometimes they can be overly confident. They want A, but they don't want less. They don't always get the A. So I, what, what, for me, I think the solution for this is that um, so our brain is like elastic. It's like say a rubber band. The more you stretch it, the more you do things to it. Uh, for, at some point, I don't know. I, I don't just believe in all of this classification above average, below average, which I think is true, it doesn't scientifically proven. But sometimes I feel like 
it is the training that you get from your parents where well, you were young um, that will determine like how you do well also how you assimilate faster in school let's now assume that you were not so advantaged to have that kind of environment and you see that you find it difficult to assimilate your friends are assimilating faster than you are what you need to do is just to put pressure on your brain when i mean put pressure on your brain i mean give you so much reading and just try to put pressure on it the brain is an elastic so it would always expand i mean your assimilation rates would keep expanding when you read more so the mindset should not be okay this is me so this, this, this should not should not take it from this is me and this is what i will always be so you can always aim higher and don't try to tell yourself that you are not intelligent and i think other things would be eat good food just other this stuff just don't just see yourself as one below average student because that's like one of the first limitations you will not want to give yourself so i think you need to come and put yourself in this category of i am above average i am intelligent when i read i understand so i think i'll just stop at that for the common of the common mind students have so now i feel it so these are this is like one tip that would help you before the semester starts so you remember it's before the semester starts so i say here that um success starts from day one success is not something that or achieving well in your academics is not what you do when you are in your penultimate year or your sophomore year or when it's the exam week success starts like the day you resumed OAU or the day you resumed your um, higher institution of learning so say start the day you start that semester so you, not, you need to be thinking success you need to be thinking good grades so you need to always you have to always be optimistic and desire good grades because really people who set goals on or desire good grades not all of them actually get those good grades so now imagine you that do not desire the good grade how would you get a good grade so you have to save that question so it's better to aim high and not necessarily maybe eat that target than not to have any aim and there's nothing that you would you are aiming at so basically i think you should just have that optimistic mindset oh this semester i'm going all out for a 5.0 i'm going all out for all a's i'm ensuring that i'm getting the highest score in this particular course so i feel just have that mindset first of all at the beginning of the semester and i would ask you to this is like one top tip for me that i'm about to say now have the habit of always asking questions from your seniors have the habit of always asking questions from your seniors. So if you're in part one, so ensure that you ask questions from those in part two and do, all and all and all like that. So ask them question, ask them specific question about a particular course, about a particular lecturer, what the lecturer wants. And I would advise you not to ask from just one student, ask from two, three senior colleagues. And also ensure that you are not asking from people who are in the same category. When I mean the same category, we just ask from people who are just overly intelligent or just overly getting good grades. Because somehow these guys might be deceptive. They might just tell you oh, that course is simple, and that is that is not what you want to hear. You want to hear like the real fact. Okay, this is what the lecturer wants. Don't make sure you read this particular material. Make, he likes attendance. He is serious with that enter attendance and also when you have those basic information. So you also ask a student who is not so serious. You ask those who are serious. So you'll be able to get like balanced opinion. And I would advise you at this point to sieve out the information that you receive from these senior colleagues to ensure that what they tell you is not causing fear in your heart. And I mean you want to register a course also, you should not just register a course based on what you think is best. You should not register a course based on course type two. So you need to ask yourself who is going to be taking this course and also ask senior colleague which course you are supposed to register. Ask about two, three. So those information that basically stands out, those are the ones that you need to um, register for. You don't just register your course like from your own thinking or perspective. So it's better to learn from other mistake than to learn from your own mistake. And you want to ask them about answering approach. Does this lecturer want it to be bulky? Does this lecturer want you to uh, say it short and precise? So and um, so. Uh, also, before the semester starts, you need to see the end from the beginning. You need to see the end from the beginning. So let me let me go to case two and explain explicitly what seeing the end from the beginning means. So this is uh, what I mean by seeing the end from the beginning. So uh, let let assume that you the courses you be registering you be registering um, CHM two two PSY three o six PSY two two ECM four two PHY three o six EGL two o four. Sorry if your department course is not here. Okay, so what you want to do for yourself 
is that immediately you register each course i mean that's at the beginning of the semester that's like at the beginning of the first or second semester this is, this is the second semester of course because it's an even number so what you do is that um, you are going to give yourself okay i'm offering probably six courses this semester and for CHM 202, I am aiming at getting a B. Now, your aim for the semester should be B, should be B or A. Now, you need to you don't need, you need to set realistic goals. So you will have found out from senior colleague how a course is actually simple or how a course is actually like complex. So you need to know okay, all of those simple courses. Try to say okay, I'm ensuring I'm getting A in them. So this is like, like about um, about six courses and. I'm looking hypothetically, it is saying, okay, I should be able to get B2 business semester and um, a 4 is So that's like what I'm working about. So these simple courses, let me ensure I'm getting A's in them and the ones that are complex, let me ensure I'm getting a B. So the reason why you are setting a goal for yourself is such that you need to write this down. So at the end of the semester, when the result is out, you'll be able to mark, oh, I was able to achieve my goals 40%, 20%, not all. I need to ensure that I want to achieve my goal. And one of the things you also want to do is that you want to be very specific as possible. So the ones you want to get B, so what's, what's the score you want to get for B? Okay, so I'm looking at, I want to get a 65. So if you want to get a 65, what do I want to get in test? What do I want to get in exam? So your, the, um, the figure you'll be giving to them doesn't have to be terminal digits. Terminal digits, I mean number ending with zero and five alone. So you see this, I said 28, I said here 45, okay, at the end of the semester, I should be aiming at 73. For instance, let's say when the result is out, you now scored 71. You will know that I didn't necessarily achieve my goal. And um, I would even advise you to aim higher than this. Let's say you aim for an 80. Now, imagine that, now imagine that, okay, you couldn't like achieve all. So for this ones that you maybe said you wanted a B, Worst case, worst case scenario, something happened, maybe I don't know, water fell, rain fell, you know, you know, mistakenly had a C. So you ensure that, okay, oh, this one I've had a C, or this one I've had a C, I need to ensure that, no, next semester I'm covering up for it. Let's say, for instance, now, my first exam was after I've made this plan, I've done, I've done tests, I've done exams, and after I've done my exam, I, this, my PS5 306, I was, I actually calculated to have a, have an A, but unfortunately, what I did in the exam, well, I'm sure that it's really by miracle that I would have act, that I would have an A. So um, it has changed to a B. And let's say, for instance, I have not now, I have not done this particular exam. This page try three o six. So what I need to do is to ensure that I change this page try three o six to having an A. I will work towards having an A in the exam. So what happened is that there is a there is specific motivation. So you are not just having a general motivation. You are having specific. So anytime I'm reading, I just go to my plan and I just feel like, okay, this one, I don't need to read out all my life into reading for it. I'm, I just want to be for it in that sense, in quotes. Then you would give it your best specific motivation. So you are not having general motivation. So you are having specific motivation for each of them. So this will help you have specific motivation, and this will help you also see that you track your goal as you are achieving it. So I think that's all about that. And uh, before the semester start, I would advise you to familiarize yourself with people. I mean, one of the things I did for myself. I mean, this is the highlight of it was I had a lot of school mommies and a lot of school daddies. And I think it's just a way of farming people that people just feel like, like entitled. Like that's in your mindset. Like you just greet their mommy, daddy. I mean, senior colleagues that have sense basically and ask them, not those that will use advantage of you, not those that will mommyize and daddyize you, and they will turn into situationship. <laughs> so you want to um, familiarize yourself with senior colleague basically. Some of them can even be your classmate that you know that these guys are very good. But I would advise your senior colleagues such that they would when you tell them when you when somebody calls you or you call somebody mommy or like school mommy you're my school mommy you're my school daddy the person feels that kind of entitlement and oh let me let me help this guy let me give him the information he needs let me tell him so you would want to familiarize yourself with people i mean i think that's like one of the tips i would ask you to do now one point of action i would say is that so what is motivating you okay so um i would just like to share a story when i was in part one one of my biggest motivation 
be my parents and i think a lot of us we had that kind of we still have that mind of mindset where we just want to get good grades because i want our parents to be proud of us and um, um unfortunately unfortunately for me one of the times during exam period so i called my mom that i think i wanted to buy a seattle textbook and i told her that i needed to buy a seattle textbook the previous week she sent me my stipend for feeding already and i said i wanted to buy this book and she said that i'm lying to her blah 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 and i feel really bad about it and i was like i had exam dinners and i said i won't read i won't go to read for my exams and i will ensure that when the results come out i will tell my mom that I did not do well in this exam because of her. <laughs> See how dumb that was, right? <laughs> so I, I told my roommate, and my roommate was like, Oh, can I teach my roommate? So my roommate knew I had an exam the next day, and he was like, Why are you not going to read out? Because then I was not staying with my fellow part once friend. I was staying with um, Staylight in, in Faji or Nova Family University. And he said, And I told him, that I'm not reading for my exam the next day. I said, like, Are you serious? Why? So what he did was that he gave me food. He ate, I think he even borrowed more money to buy the textbook and he just talk sentences to my head idea. And I think for me that changed a lot of things for me and I changed my motivation. So your primary motivation for doing well in school. Sorry for my banter story, I think it was not funny. The primary motivation for you for doing well in school should be for yourself. Because when you get that good grades, when you graduate, when you get that good job, the person that will the person's name that will be on that certificate would be your be your name. My dad used to tell me something that um, when you have money today, you first of all remember yourself. You first of all have settled, you'll have eaten before you think of you want to remember me. And the funny thing is that's the bitter truth. So everything you are doing is for yourself. So you need to see that your primary motivation should be yourself, not anybody. Not the person you are in a relationship with, not your parents, not anybody. So you need to be self-motivated so that things can come secondary. Like you have people who, if you are advantage, so have people who call you to check on you, to remind you. I think I had one person like that, my teacher in secondary school was always calling me to ask for my grade. And for me, I think that was also another motivation. So you need to ask yourself what is motivating you not who i said what you need to see that okay i want to give my best to this sojourn in my undergraduate days and see that yes to come i'm proud of myself that is what i did so and um, so what do you need to do during the semester so you need to understand what works for you don't follow the crowd i mean if you know that yours is day reading night reading la cram la poor just know what works for you and all the, I would also advise you to take your tests seriously, like exams, because really it is all of those stuff are cumulative. It is this if you do not do well in tests, is you are going to struggle in exams. And um, I would encourage you to read, read, read I would encourage you regularly. Although this was not what I did you know, as a student, I don't know. People just say read every day, but I don't know how people do it. Reading every day as a student, but yeah, some persons would do it. But if you can. You would you should read you should read every day. Maybe if I read every day, I will have had better grades than the one I had as a student. And um, you one of the things you do, I think this is like one major highlight. The one major highlight you want to ensure, one major highlight you want to ensure is that let your lecturers know you. I'll say it again. Let your lecturers know you. Now most times people are always neutral when it comes to this, or people are against this opinion that you should not allow your lecturer know you. Uh, I would say that if you are not in a very large class, um, yeah, I, there, are, there are chances that your lecturer would know you, even you without doing some other things. Now, when I mean let your lecturer know you, let your lecturer know your matric number, let your lecturer know your name. So, some people just come and lecturer just know their face, and you just know that. So, even the lecturer don't even know their face, and that's a very wrong thing. If you want to get good grades in where you in anywhere, you should allow your lecturer know you. Just like if you are working in the corporate world and your line manager, your boss, doesn't know you there's just a way that you might not get some benefits so you need to allow people know you because these lecturers are the one that will mark your scripts so and i'll tell you the advantage of you know, advantage of lecture and lecture knowing so what happened is that eventually when you get to say part three part four if your lecturer knows you and the lecturer just <clears throat> assumes that you are intelligent so what happens is so let me i think this is a perfect one for me here so let's assume that this is your script so lecturer is about to mark his script. So most times what they say is that they should not write a name, but sometimes people write a name in their sleep and all. And that this is for when you get to part three and part four. So what happens is that um, when the lecturer is about to mark, he might 
Look at the matrix number, look at the name. <coughs> Sorry about that. You might look at the matrix number, look at the name. So if the lecturer assumes that this, if the lecturer knows that this guy is intelligent already, when the lecturer is marking, there will be that bias in his or her mindset while marking. This is not always true though. Just imagine that you have a friend who is very good academically and he, he does an assignment for you and you have a friend who is not very good academically. Even before you mark in their scripts, you will just assume that this guy who is good academically will answer very well. So one of the things you want to do for yourself is to allow your lecturer have a good perception of you. So when because the human mind is subjective. So when the lecturer knows that ah, this guy is intelligent, he might not even pay too much attention to details of what you are saying. Or if the lecturer doesn't know that you are intelligent, the lecturer is marking on a normal playing ground, he would have to like, okay, let's say he has seen your mistake in one or two places and he doesn't know you at all, he would just feel you like that. When the lecturer sees like you are intelligent and he sees a mistake somewhere and he feels like, ah, this guy is not like this, he talks in class, he, he, I'm sure he knows this thing, maybe it's just a mistake. Instead of even scoring you a zero, he might give you a two. I think that's it about that. And um, in case you now probably have issues with probably a particular course, you can even freely go meet the lecturer and tell him, sir, I need your help for this, or sir, this is what happening. Not like you, you are going to meet the lecturer for the first time, you have an issue, and it's like, oh, did you register for this course? So it's to feel awkward. So you want to be proactive, not saying that, um, okay, let me just... Let me just stay low key. Low key doesn't do it. You can look. There are a lot of people who do low key and they get good grades. Uh, I know that about that. So I'm just. I just assume this. I did, no lecturer told me this, but I'm just assuming. Like I said, this might not be true. One of the things you want to do for yourself is to probably talking in class, maybe raising up a hand. Sometimes it might just be affirmation. Sometimes it might just be asking questions. Sometimes it might be routine greetings. Maybe you don't. You don't have to walk to the lecturer's office and. And go greet them when they are passing by you can help them carry their bag run around to them so what you are doing is that you are acting like a politician like okay you know during that election period politicians are just overly nice so that's one of the things you want to do for yourself ensuring that okay i am and i want this lecturer to know me that's like the mindset i want you to know me as a very intelligent student as a good student and if i female people say that oh uh, especially if the lecturers are male, you are like, oh, I don't want lecturers to get advantage of me. And I'm like, really? You don't want lecturers to get advantage of you? It's not like lecturer is going to corner you and just do anything for you abruptly without your consent. So you want to ensure that you create boundaries also. And also, let's say one of the ways to also get known in class is that let's say group works, during presentation, you volunteer for a group to present or you volunteer out to do something and if you have a very large class let's say you're in part one student sometimes this might not work no matter how you talk in class if you are doing a class of over a thousand students and lecture is even marking objectives so don't stretch yourself this approach will work for you when you get to the department from part two also during the semester our advice that you source materials and pass questions in house and from outsiders so what do i mean from in house so a lot of times people are from cliques as a student so you see that if I am looking for Bola, all I need to do is ask Tola where is Bola. And because of that, we have this, so anything Bola has, um, Tola will also have it. But anything that you has, Tola might not have it because that is not your friend. So what you want to do for yourself as a student is that you want to be open-minded such that you are, you are not having everybody as your close friend, but there is such an acquaintance with almost all your classmates either no matter their level of intelligence because some of these guys will have materials that are hidden that would help you so when you are very open you can always walk up to them and say oh i do you have this past question this material and they will freely give you because an average student might want <coughs> an average student might want to hold all of these materials at all so what if you are very open you would get them and uh, let's not assume that you are borrowing your court outside so let's say that um, you are in you are in demography and you are borrowing a course from philosophy. Let's say you are, let's say as a person student, you borrowed FIU 101 or that's FIU 101 from philosophy department. The best set of state students that will have philosophy material would not be your fellow demography students, would be those who are philosophy students. And then they might understand some integrity to the course or they have a background knowledge of the course because that is their core course. So you want to sort material and pass questions from those outsiders too. So normal things you want to do that everybody will tell you is that have a complete note, attend class, 
eat before classes i think this eating before classes would help you <laughs> i think almost all the classes i attended at the student i ate before my class except in weird cases so you want to eat before class so that you will not have hard breaks when you get to class and lecture is not around and you now feel like what's the point so mark attendance from lectures would mark forever attendance and they won't use one and some lectures will mark attendance so i also advise to pay attention in class paying attention in class is very very key so like and um that's not the time you should just it's not there's nothing wrong with sitting your friends but sometimes just hearing what the lecturer is saying and also writing down what the lecturer is saying will help you to get some additional tips that is not in the material and um, i would say that the highlight of this is that I like your course and the courses you register so what do i mean by like your course let's say for instance you are a wounded doctor you are supposed to be giving medicine and you will found yourself in a department like maybe microbiology biochemistry which are very nice courses and i will not probably talk about how relevant they are today so subsequently i may make other videos on time management and relevance of some science courses which i have had information to know about but not now so one of the things you want to do is you want to like your course generally let's say for instance microbiology so you need to see yourself i mean microbiology even though you have intentions for you to cross the department or leave to another department your number of semesters in that department still ensure that you like the course because even those that like the course they are not still getting good grades and i imagine you don't like a course there's just a way the lecturer will be saying something that it will be irritating that will annoy you if you don't like that particular course and also if you don't like one of the courses you registered so this is now moving from microbiology now let's say you now registered mcb 201 you now hear that the course is so complex you don't even like the formulas or you don't like the lecturer so try to like your lecturer try to like the course try to like the course you are doing so it will help you to assimilate faster to help you to like the i mean get good grades so i this is how to read for exam i don't know maybe the previous ones i've been saying you might probably know some of them already but this is how to read for exam so maximize your lecture free week so lecture free week is not the time for you to finish all the series of movies you can always do that after exam i mean that's Lecture of week is meant to be for reading. So and um, I would advise you to use the reverse chronological reading strategy. Reverse chronological reading strategy. And this is the point I want you to pay attention very well. This is case three, I want you to pay attention to this reverse chronological reading strategy. So this is an hypothetical exam timetable. This is an hypothetical exam timetable. We have, I'm um, using three departments as a case study. So we have um, Department A, um, we have ECC 205, we have ECC 201, ECC 201, CS 201, and ECC 203, ECC 207. So let's assume, let's go back in time. This data has passed already. Let's go back in time. Let's imagine that. So this timetable was out before the lecture of the week. And um, so how would, how would you advise me to maximize your lecture free so you, this is for schools that have lecture free week actually for schools that don't have lecture free week this might not apply to you some of these principles might apply to you so what you want to do is that you understand that lecture free week is just one week lecture free week is just one week so then the, the first exam the person have is on the monday 17th the second exam is on a thursday so one of the things you want to do for yourself is that so how many days in Tava are there between monday and Thursday. So now, let's say we have Tuesday, Wednesday, and we have Thursday. We have three days. We have three days. So it depends. If this exam, if this one is 8 a.m. and this one is 4 p.m., I think it's still cool. Or we can say maybe two days. We can say two days, three days. Or it depends. So let's just work with three days. So we have, so let's assume that I finished my exam on Monday morning. Let's say this exam was on Monday morning, 8 a.m. So by the time I'm done, I'll, read, I'll still read for that Monday. I'll read for Tuesday and I'll read for Wednesday. So then let's say my exam for this one is now Thursday morning. Or even if it's Thursday evening, that's like almost like four days. So let's go to this. You, you need to check in like what's the number of days in Tava you have between the exam dates. So this one is um, on Thursday and the exam is in Wednesday. So this is like zero, zero or one day zero or one day interval 
So let's say I, I do this exam on a Thursday, on a Thursday now, and on Thursday morning, and the ex this one now, the let's say is on it. I did on a Thursday morning. That means after I'm done, I will just go read up straight for the one I have on Friday. That's just one day. Let's say coincidental. This one is not even Thursday. 4 p.m. 4 p.m. on Thursday. And um, so I, I hope you're paying attention. You might want to slow this video in case you are not understanding. So the, this one is like 4 p.m. Remember, this is the first exam. This is the second exam. This is the third exam. So what we are trying to um, get now is to put the margin or the days we have in between each exam. So this one is 4 p.m. So this is what you do when you see your exam template. This is how to read for exam or this is how to mark when the lecture for it. So you see, let's say this is 4 p.m. and this is like even 8 a.m. the next day. So this is like you have a zero day to read or prepare for it. So let's move to this. So this is a... Uh, this is supposed to be Wednesday or Thursday. I think this is about five or six days. Five or six days in Tower. Five or six days in Tower. So I hope, I hope you're getting this. This is about five or six days in Tower. And um, this is uh, this is I think this is also about five days. This is six days. I think six days in Tower. Six or five days in Let's do six days in Tower. Six days in Taval. Okay, so and this is um, let's say this is two days in Taval. Two days in Taval. Okay. Wow. So this looks like a very fair timetable. I mean, at least you would, you really find an exam timetable that is this nice. Some are not very very nice. I would we get to scenarios that are not very very nice. So what you need to do is that, so imagine there was never a lecture free week. Most likely, I don't know, it depends on how bulky these two courses are. Let's imagine there was never a lecture free week. Most likely, what happened is that if this person finishes the exam on a Monday morning, he has another three days to read for this course. He has another three days to read for this course. He has another three days to read for this course. Now, let's imagine that after he's done for this course, now, there's no lecture free week, and he doesn't have, like, zero day, or he has, like, he, had, he has no day or no time to read for the course, he has just one day to read for this course, which, um, if he does this, it will be bad. Uh, if he does this, it will be good. It will be good for the students. I mean, what I mean is that, say, for instance, Let's say there was never a lecture for week and this student was just reading his exam after the next exam. Say it's only when he's done with SSC 205, that's when he read SSC 201. So let's say when he was when he was done with uh, SSC 205, he had three days interval before SSC 201. He had these three days is good enough to read this course. But when he was done with SSC 201 and SSC 201 is the next day, this might be a bad one because he might not get good grades. So looking at this also, when it's done, he has another five days in Tava for this. So let's say this might, um, let's say this is, I think, very good. This is very good, I think. You should be able to get very good grades. And um, this one also, six days in Tava. This is also, I think, very good. Very good. Okay. And this one this is um, just two days in Taval. And uh, ah, so this is, we we'll say this is um, bad. So this is bad. I hope you just understand what I'm doing. So let me just give a run through again. Because of the three days in Taval, he has here. Yeah, so he has, um, yeah, if you read for three days just for this course, you should be able to have a good grade. This would be bad. This would be very good because of the five days in Taval. This would be very good because of the six day interval this will be very good because of the two days interval so now but thank god he has a lecture free week there is not a lecture free week so the question is that what should this guy do during the lecture free week what should what should you read during the lecture free week lecture free week now thank you so this guy here if I was him or our or people, students in this department, 
these are the only courses that I already do in lecture free week. The courses that are bad, I read. This is the only course I already do in lecture free week. Let me show us. This is the only course I already lecture free week. I read just these two courses because I know that by the time I'm done, let's say even though I want to read other courses during lecture free week, I might. I still have like almost a lecture for week to read for those courses. Like this is a rationale. So most times what students do is that they make a mistake and their lecture for week, they read all these courses, which is a very bad approach. Because you still have another lecture for week. This is like almost a whole lecture for week. So but in between these six days, like because you still have two courses, you can now come up and still read this again. So what happened is that lecture for week, what I will read first of all, is just these two courses that I don't have a very good spaces in between them. So now, now come and pay attention to this course. Yeah, this first course here. Yeah. This first course here. Yeah. So this is the first exam. So what I would do is that in my lecture for week, I would most likely start reading Let's say I have Monday to Saturday. I have Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay, so we have Monday, Tuesday. So what happened is that this bad one, I will read it on Monday. Let your attention, guys. I'll read it on Tuesday. Okay, control Z. I'll read it on Tuesday. I'll read it. I might, most times, sometimes, what I do for myself is I read them simultaneously. I'll read this. Now, pay attention. Pay attention. I read, you read this like two course a day. I think reading two course a day would help you so that you can, you will not be very boring. But if you know you like those one course a day, you can use that approach. So, what I do is that um, i read this one. That's the last course here. And I read this one here. So the next day on Tuesday, I will start with this course on Tuesday. Instead of starting with this order, then I will end with this course. So the idea is that what I used to end the day reading is what I used to start the next day reading. And on and all like that. So I will do that to Wednesday. So what happened is that, look at this first course here. Now you remember that this is the first course. So most times what students do is that, on the first day of lecture free week, they start reading their first course. I mean, they start reading the first exam they have. So let's say their exam is next week Monday, and today is a Monday, they will read the first exam they have this Monday. And that's a very wrong approach. What you're supposed to do, no matter your structure of your timetable, is that you're supposed to be reading your first course the Friday or the Thursday before the Monday or the few days before it. I don't know if you probably get this. I hope you are. So what happened is that so this is my first course. This is the first course I have. Pay attention. I will read and my is on a Monday. I will read it into the exam. I think that's the mindset. I would focus on it alone into the exam. That's what I would also focus on it alone. Focus on it alone. So it depends on how bulky it is. If it's just, if it's not very bulky, I can work we'll do from Friday. But if it's very bulky, I might do from a Thursday. So the essence of this is that you are reading this into the exam. You are reading this into the exam because all these ones that you read, you still have to read them again because the exams are not very close. You still have to read them again. So that's like the approach you use for maximizing your lecture freak. So let me go to another hypothetic um, exam. So this is this is an exam on a on a Thursday. This is a Thursday. This is an exam on a Saturday. So we have let's say we have Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Let's say we have three days. Okay. Let's because of these courses are quite bulky. Let's say we have two days. Two days. So this is if you read, yeah, it is um, it's quite bad. If you read, let's say there's no lecture for week now. If you read when it's on with one hundred one, and the next thing he just does is read one hundred one. This might be a very bad one for him or her. So and um, after this, he has 
or oh, five days, five days interval, which is no matter how bad, I think this is still fair enough. If there was never a lecture for me, can the first time is reading this exam, is reading ZOO 101, is after he's done with MTH 101. And this is um, some six days, I guess. Six days. I think this this exam timetable is still fair enough. Exam timetable is still fair enough. I think this is still good. So I think. Um, so what I do, what I would do for 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 myself, if I was in this department, was that during lecture of week I won't read other courses. The only course I will read in lecture of week is just this course. This course because I don't have, I just have to do this in Taba for it. So this is another almost a lecture of week for this one. It's almost a lecture of week for this one. It's almost a lecture of week for this next course. It's almost a lecture of week for this next course. So what you do is. You read for this one that you don't have so much space in for this is the one that you focus on during the lecture free week and just like the first approach we use so when it is like three days or four days to your exam let's say so madam is monday tuesday wednesday this person can read just mch 101 and um, um when it's thursday friday saturday so now okay this exam is not even starting on a thursday he can even for his whole lecture free week, just read this more and read this a little bit read this a little bit and start reading section 101 on a monday before this exam i think that would be best now for situations whereby let's imagine some of these courses that um their spacing is still very like nice you might want to say okay for lecture for week what i want to do is that i want to write out some of the notes maybe i want to complete my notes or I want to photocopy, you just want to ensure that the notes are complete so that it's not doing lecture during the time, the few days of the exam, you'll be looking for what you want to read and all. So, and um, for those that are calculation, you might just want to relieve your stress of reading. I mean, okay, let me, well, I'm done reading, but okay, why not just calculation? And okay, another strategy before I go to this hypothetical reading is that for your lecture free week, let's say your exam are evenly spaced, I mean, you just have two, 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 two days. So let's say, okay, let me give another hypothetical. So we have student, so let's say we have an exam is on a Monday, which is very rare. Monday, Wednesday. This is, I don't know, let's say this is, <coughs> this is normal where exam should be like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. This is um, CHM. Biology, PSY, GPY, ECA, DSS. So let's assume that this is someone's exam timetable. I mean, he has Monday, Wednesday, Friday. He has Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So they, there's really no lecture for week in between. And that special lecture for week for him. So what he's supposed to do, he's supposed to read, maximize lecture for week and most likely read all these courses. But you know, this is a very rare case. So what he is supposed to do, so this is the exam timetable, exam timetable. So for lecture free week, sorry, for lecture free week, for lecture free week. So the way this guy is supposed to read, he's supposed to read in a reverse, code. sorry I'm using guy, let me, I'll just read the answer. <laughs> the way this lady is supposed to read, She's supposed to read in a reverse chronological order. So what she would, her first course she's supposed, she supposed to read for the exam would be DSS, or in lecture free week, sorry. The first course she would read for lecture free week should be DSS, not reading in this order. Then the next course would be, the next course would be ECN. You see, I'm picking up from here. The next course would be GPY. Then the next course will be PSY. The next course will be PSY. Then the next course will be biology. Then the next course should be CHM. Now, if you notice, this CHM is the last course this person will read in lecture free. 
because by the time he's done reading this CHM as the last course, he's going to enter the exam or doing this first course on a Monday. So the mindset is that, let's say from a Friday or the Friday or Thursday, he is just, he's not going to read the CHM at all from Monday to Thursday. Just that Friday or that Thursday, he will just start to read CHM and like, I want to read it and enter the exam or that's like the mindset. Now, let's assume that, so this is the order in which this guy wants to read. So what he does is that, what he will now do is that, um, so let's imagine this. So guys, we just follow me through. Let's imagine this. So let's imagine that, so this is DSS. You want to read DSS, you see. So I advise people to read two cost per day, uh, two cost per day, GPY, PSY. This is um, Monday. This is Monday. This is Tuesday. This is Tuesday. This is um, this is lecture for week reading. <coughs> this is Wednesday. Wednesday is to read. Okay, remember I said that you can. Do, I think what I do is I do two course. I do two ECN. I will do like this because you might not be able to finish a course in two days. Something like that. And DSS. So then I move on to the next course. I move on to GPY. I'm making this practical as possible so that you can watch for yourself and do for yourself. PSY. Now you Thursday. Do PSY. Now do GPY. So you see it's, it's going this way. And um, so for Friday, I can do. Friday morning, I'll just do biology. Bio, I'll just read biology once and say, okay, let me read CHM. And I'll say, okay, Saturday, because it's my first course, CHM, CHM, Sunday, CHM, CHM. I don't know if you get this now. So I'm not, I've not read it. I didn't read Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I just read it on Saturday. I read it on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So at least this should be a great time, you know. But if you know that this course is very bulky, you might want to start from a Thursday before the lecture, before the exam date. So one of the things I also do is that I don't just peer course based on their order. I peer them based on boring and boring and interesting. So if this is a boring course, I'll peer boring, interesting, boring, interesting. Don't just peer interesting, interesting course alone. If you know you are a fan of calculation, so don't read your calculation course the same day. So if you know you like HT, MTH very well, so they don't read MTH 101 and MTH 105 the same day. So just read MTH 101 and CHM 101 so that by the time you are done reading the boring course, you will use the interesting course to rise up your energy. And most times it's best to start your day off reading the interesting, the boring course and later you read the um, interesting course. So let me use this for the last one. So this person has a Monday, Tuesday. Person has a Thursday, Monday, and person has a Friday, Monday. I think this looks okay. This looks the I think like the example I did. So, somewhere really, like when you have a situation whereby you have almost like some four or five days before another exam, don't do that exam during lecture. Read reverse to not quick or that your first exam, ensure that you read it into the exam. Or, you know, there are some cases that things can go extreme if you have two exams the same day and. Um, might not be something that you expected so i think that's like one of the things you want to do for i hope you understand this and in case you don't understand you can probably ask me so use this opportunity cost strategy use the opportunity cost strategy so what i mean by the opportunity cost strategy what's to create a case for it is that um okay so let me let me go back to this okay so let's go back um Opportunity mm, cost strategy. So for those that did economics or related cost, they will understand what opportunity cost is. Opportunity cost is that, for example, I'm supposed to go to party or I'm supposed to read my books. So the opportunity cost for read and eventually I eventually chose to read my books. So the opportunity cost in that scenario is the party. So the one you forgo. So what I do for myself in the exam is that or before I read is I know that there are some courses that they carry the same units. Let's say there are five units course or three units course. All of them, most time your courses might carry almost relatively the same units. Except when the sciences, that like you have practical that is just one unit or no. 
So what you do for yourself is that so your potential course strategy is that those courses that in a way looks like sure courses, those are the courses that I will focus on in my reading. These are the ones that will pour my energy to. Look at these courses that are sure courses. Now these courses that this is like no matter what you do, the lecturer end up giving you C or B. I don't pour my energy on reading them. Now is this my shock you actually? The reason is because no matter how sometimes no matter how you pour energy on reading some courses, the lecturer will just do some courses, they are worth like three three courses altogether. And I'm like, what's the point? And there are some courses that um, God bless those lecturers, God bless those course titles and those course code. What I do is I focus on these courses that show e courses to ensure that I do not miss the A. So it's like A is A, you must not pass me by. But if you are now these courses that show e courses that people are getting A, you are now beginning to get B. You're not beginning to get C. Ha. That's the way the problem is. So you but this one that is that you know they are complex. The lecture will fill everybody together. You know that even though you get B or C it's still it's still fair enough and at least on your part. So the opportunity cost strategy I use is ensuring that I would because I might not during lecture free week, I might not give I might not have all the time in the world to read all the course with the same level of energy. But the ones that are very, very simple, I would make sure that they are not my opportunity. I'll read them and make others opportunity because so like this one also know what your lecturer wants. So take away your ego. So this is like one of the things students do. So you see students say that um oh, me, I will never go to that school library. I would never I would never read overnight, although this is very rare. I was one of the students that was saying that I would never read overnight. I didn't read overnight in way till I was in part two, second semester there, but and that was because my schedule was so tight that my reading time could not fit into the day anymore. And the reason why I didn't read overnight was because it was not my thing, I would just obviously go to sleep. So I don't, one of the things I talked about was not deceiving yourself. So you should not deceive yourself that uh, uh, people are reading overnight, let me to go and read overnight. So another thing is I one of the things I also did for myself was that I said till I graduate I would always have my beat before I go to any exam or but there was a day I had to break that rule that really <laughs> except I want to be late for this exam. So that's like one of the things you want to do. So take away your ego. You can't be a student for life. Any rules you place for yourself, I don't know, work around it and ensure that you give your best to your academics. Also another thing is have complete notes, attend classes, it before classes, mark attendance. Don't lie to yourself if you are not assimilating. Say, for example, if you are reading and you are not assimilating, the best thing to do is just close that book, take a walk, take a nap, sleep or something. So one of the ways to, you just do that, this thing is not entering or something, just leave it for the moment. Maybe you need to probably change time and say, okay, morning is not working for me, it is not, it is, let me check in the afternoon. So because you don't want to waste your time and just stay with your friends and say that I am reading, I am reading and the result is not showing forth. Now, another thing also is that um, you should have a reading time and you should have a reading place. Now, you should know that what works for you by now. Now, this is the time I like to read. Most likely for me, then I said it was in the evenings, and obviously I had to change that. Book. So, have a reading time. Like most times, when I read by this time, I assimilate faster. So, that's the time you should work with. And you should also have a reading venue if it is your room. But you know that is your, you like when you read in your room. You would assimilate so don't be that kind of persons that have read in different places you read in this hall you read in this lecture theater you read in this lecture theater you would when you get the issue about that is that when you get to a new lecture theater you would first of all be observing the environment and you're looking at oh so this is how this chair is placed oh so there's this poster here but somewhere that you've been before you've always used you there's just that environment that you'll be cool with the serenity so if you know you like noisy places and just know what works for you but be loyal to a location <laughs> i think that's a word and i will also advise you to have two in case that one the baby the place that you are using is locked or you can't use so have like two that you use that okay this lecture theater is locked i'll use this lecture theater and online also be flexible so don't just say all is my room so sometimes you want to go out and check new places and the time to do this experimentation is not during lecture for week it is during the semester so also, like I said, the first exam is win-win. You notice the approach I gave you of reading into the exam. Also, you should know that this first exam is the simplest one I should want to do. So, also, you should know when to read and know when to cram. I think that's like, depends on how you cram, depends on how you read. 
So what to do in the exam or like I think this is like one of the things I would also advise this is like one of the things to do in the exam or avoid talking in the exam or I don't know. It's just a way that he might not get nice on you, especially if you're caught by a lecturer. Sitting position, most of the time I would advise you to sit in front, although this is subjective, it depends. So you should probably just have regular places that you sit on. You can even go at, go survey the oral exam or you'll be using before the moment if it will be open and just check how the place look like. So in the first five minutes, you are not checking how does this place look like and all. And that thing you want to, want to do for yourself is that five minutes to the exam, don't read anything, drop your books. The ones you've been reading for over hours is enough. Just drop your books because what you are doing for yourself is that you are creating fear. You are also putting scenarios where you don't know, like if you now start to discover new things. You now be like, maybe those sometimes it works. Maybe that what you read five minutes that would eventually be the saving grace. But most times I encourage people not to do this, not to read five minutes to the exam or just drop the note and say the rest is on God's hand and all. And I also advise that don't leave the exam or before the time elapsed. You can leave ten minutes before the time elapsed, but. Don't be like those who the lecture gives you two hours, thirty minutes, and one hour you are done, and people are really leaving the exam. The lecture will give you two hours, thirty minutes. He's smart. He knows what you want. He knows that uh, the course will take you two hours, thirty minutes. So ensure that what you do, you maximize your time. Even this by repeating, by saying one thing like the same way. And sometimes what I do for myself is that by the time I'm done, maybe let's say I'm answering in the order of question two, question one, question three. When I'm done answering question two, I will leave like some spaces in between. Let's say three lines. Let's say I, I'm done with two A and I want to do two B. What I do is that before I do two B, I'll leave like some three to four lines just in case I want to add more things in the long run. During maybe I remember some things or there's two extra time. Also, don't leave the exam or before time that lapse. I also said talked about that. So sit around people that are intelligent in the exam. I think this is would help you so much. I also put your best fit forward like if you know that it's number four that you understand better read number go and start with number four also try to be write big bold and i light it's big bold and i light so you need to like very i won't use the word legible like when lecturer knows that this is what this is to a this to be so lecture will now have to be confused about uh, where is the answer so you might want to paint with your Bible or use your pencil to rule or something if you have that luxury of time. So most time I use my Bible to rewrite. It should just be as though like this what to do. You see that this stand out and all. And another thing you want to do is try to work with a wrist watch. I feel every student should have a wrist watch. So a lecturer says that exam is one at 30 minutes and you have three questions to answer. So you'll have divided it. So by the time I'm done with question one, it's 30 minutes. By the time I'm done with question two, it's 30 minutes. So even though by 30, when 30 minutes elapsed and you're still in question one, so you'll have checked your time. I will have what I do is I should do it. So let's say the exam starts eight. I'll just write eight to eight thirty question one. Eight thirty to nine question two. Nine th nine thirty question question three. So but, but that's like I'm checking my time when I'm working. So it's not like the lecturer just come and say five minutes more and you're like oops. So what and you're like when the time elapsed and no matter how you write all so much, the lecture will not exceed more than twenty marks maybe for one question. It depends. So what you do for yourself is that let's say by the time you are done with question you are writing you are, you are doing question one and you notice that that 30 minutes has elapsed because you might not be allowed to pick up your phone into the exam or, so it's wrong actually so by the time 30 minutes has elapsed what you do is you just leave that question one that you are not done just go to question two that you want to answer answer question two you want to answer so what you do is you leave spaces like okay i'm coming back to answer this one and go to question two answer it by the time that 30 minutes elapsed so and also number three then what you do is that you try to create like 10 minutes in between and okay let me try to come and fill up so you would not just be carried away i think that's one of the things you want to do after you watch this video if you have a wristwatch go buy a wristwatch a wristwatch you can get i don't know inflation and all you can get a wristwatch of 1k to k or there about to save you so much it saved me a lot especially if you are doing calculation courses so I'm about to end this. So this is our additional tips. So ensure you are not alone. Now, actually, you can't do it alone. I'm serious. So um, try as well to add friends who help you, which you guys help yourself together. And try as possible well to avoid getting a C, a D, and an E, because those those thoughts are actually a sucker. I would advise you to learn how to calculate your CGPA. B also can be a sucker if you are trying to 
um, you want to be a first class student so also try to analyze your results use it to figure out your strength and your weakness so check okay ah, is it that calculation courses that is to get very good grades is it that i like i get good grades in dr lamu course or a dr adamu course or mr lai muhammad course so you not check oh when is mr lai muhammad course i used to get a most time i need to ensure that this dr adamu i'm putting my pressure on it and sometimes i just say I give up on Mr. Lamu, Dr. Adamu that I used to get aid from me. That's when I will ensure I'm focusing. And so by analyzing your results and seeing, okay, what went wrong? Okay, how did I do for this exam? Oh, this was what happened. Oh, I didn't read all the materials and all. So try to be objective yourself. Check your portal very well, your result, and see how you can bring out some indications from it and say, okay, what are the things I can do better? And then one of the, one of the, what do you, do you need to do when you have issues with results? You need to be able to apply emotional intelligence in this scenario. What do I mean by politely going to meet the lecturer? So at this point, I will have assumed that you are you already know the lecturer. The lecturer already knows your matric number and your name. So it will be easy to actually like talk to him. And also, so never generalize a problem. If you notice that, okay, everybody did not do well in the course, don't say that, oh, well, the lecturer was wicked. And no, don't generalize a problem. So the one of these also the best time to collect past question and material is immediately after exam. So you're in part one, first semester, and you're like, okay, the next semester is not part two, first semester. Maybe you are done. Those part two students go and collect their past question and their material because that is when it is still fresh with them. And I advise you not to collect past question and material from those that are very popular because a lot of people would be all out into them. So those that are not popular, so you you know you don't need that material for that next semester because you are still in part one. What you do is, by the time you are doing the exam, just pack it and collect it and keep it. So, your response to a good or bad result, in case you have a good result, read more. In case you have a bad result, that will motivate you. So, it is a competition and not a competition. You are competing with your friends. You are not competing with your friends, but you are competing because the lecturer most likely will have like a number of students that he wants to give A. He has a number of students he wants to give a, B and C and all. There is a quota for it. And prayer is also important and special advice for each level. I think I'll be ending with this. I uh, heard that, um, so if you, special advice for each level. Special advice for each level. So if you are in, um, okay. If you are in part one, the best time to build a GP is in part one and part two. I think that's the best time. If you are in part two, ensure you book up. You are new in the department, part three. See it as second half thing, like okay, part one and part two is contract. I'm left with part three and part four. So, part four and part five 3.5 is there from 3.6. Give your last lap your best. Okay, I think this I'm supposed to say this also. Try to analyze your past questions. So, what you need to do so you pick up five past questions years back and you see, okay, okay, you write out all the questions you see. So, if you see a question that repeats itself, so just write plus one plus one plus one so if this question repeats itself more than one time just write the number of times it repeats itself if this repeats itself just one just write plus one so this one's that repeated itself if this repeated itself just once this once and this repeated itself twice this one repeated itself twice repeated itself just once so you know that this one that repeated itself three times in in different years will always come out in the exam room. so i think that um this tip should help you to be able to do well in your academics and in case you need any f more things so kindly let me know thank you for taking out your time to watch this video and um, i'll watch out for my subsequent videos